Commence primary ignition. I'm just not the, the hero type, clearly. What a piece of junk. Enterprise, this is the captain. I got a bad feeling about this. It's all part of the plan. Engage. Welcome back to Podcast Super One. I'm your host, Donovan Thompson, with my co-host Daniel Wingfield. And today is episode 210 of Podcast Two for One, YouTube.com slash at two for one studios. Guys and gals, it's the best place to consume all the content. If you didn't know listeners, and let's be honest, you probably did not, we are sponsored at Kapow Comics, located at 4047 East Kill Avenue in Sherwood, Arkansas, that they have comic books, collectibles, graphic novels, and of course, special guest appearances throughout the year. Kapow. Kapow. I'll actually be visiting Kapow Comics this weekend as I re-enter Arkansas to watch Deadpool and Wolverine with... Hell yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. And um, and in honor of that, we had to watch and review a couple weeks ago Deadpool for the first time for Daniel, my 10th time or so. And then this week we're talking Deadpool 2, Daniel's also first time and also my 10th time or so watching this film. Mm. So I'm very excited and curious. And I'll say this, last night, I, I, I've, said this, I've maintained this since the, it came out. It's It's not as good as the first movie, in my opinion. Um, I still find a lot to love about it. And even after watching it so many times, I was watching it last night. And even though I've heard the joke a billion times, for some reason, like the racism joke for Josh Brolin hit me even harder last night. Like when he was dying, like, I hope you judge people by the content of their character. <laughs> was that the color of skin? And I was like almost crying. I was laughing so hard. And I've never really <laughs> laughed at that joke, particularly that hard before. This is like my 10th time. So I keep finding ways to love it in other way, you know, as I yeah. keep watching it. Um, and I've been very excited because even just the after credits, which we'll get into, <laughs> I was kind of like, I cannot wait to talk to Daniel about this because he's never seen it. I'm curious as to what he thinks. And also now he it, it might even open up some doors narratively for you and how, to, how this can lead into Deadpool Wolverine. So for sure, for sure, for sure. So let's get into it. Daniel. What were your yeah. thoughts on Deadpool 2? Uh, I loved it. I think I think it's an interesting movie because when I'm thinking about Deadpool one and two, I think that they, I both I really like them, but I think they do different things better than each other. They're they're different in in a lot of ways, sure. right? I think Deadpool one is a tighter film. It, the the plot is just much more organic, much more just flows really nicely. It doesn't overstay its welcome in any scenes. Like the the cast is smaller and i think that the movie benefits from that just kind of being more condensed um at the same time i think deadpool 2 might be funnier i think mm. i think i laughed out loud like like multiple times and like i was laughing in deadpool 1 but there was like sometimes it was just like i'm try, like i'm la i'm giggling a lot i'm like this isn't really sure. enjoyable there was so many lines in this one where i just like it just caught me off guard the i'm batman line <laughs> Yeah, it just like I just was yeah. not you know I just like died. there's lots of references in oh that and like one of the best ones which was in the trailer at the time was are you sure you're not from the DC universe which at the time was perfect yes yes yeah, yeah the, you know, the, the, you're, you're like, all, coming out. yes you're all moody and brute yeah yeah yeah. Um, yeah yeah and so there was just multiple and I feel like I for I need I feel like I want to watch it again because I feel like I forgot so many jokes already yeah you know because they're so constant. But yeah, I think the plot isn't as tight. The it doesn't mm -hmm. feel quite as organic. You know, Cable is is fine. Josh Brolin's fun, but you know, it's just it. And I like I do like the whole angle with with Wade and the kid. I think that does work pretty well. I like you know the idea of him trying to like you know save him from becoming that person and whatnot. It doesn't necessarily tie into like i think like his character arc strongly or like they kind of do this way of like oh look you and you and cable are similar because you're like trying to you know change something that you that happened that you felt like it was your fault or whatever right in terms of like um cable doesn't you know cable's trying to kill the kid in the future he doesn't succeed that guy kills his family you know, Deadpool's killing all these gangsters and stuff. He pisses one of them off and then they kill his wife and they make a little parallel of that, of like, Oh, it's you interesting. Know, but, but that to me doesn't really connect with 
Wade and the kid necessarily. Or yeah, like, I mean, if you really you know if you I mean? really think about it, like he kind of solves what happened the issues with his wife pretty early on. Like he kills the killer. Yeah, who killed his wife? Which I don't mind then it, necessarily. Which I don't, I don't I don't either. But then it becomes um, what's Wade's purpose and like oh he's got to find his he had a family he was starting a family with his wife and they were fixing yeah. to potentially have a kid but he has to find a new family now and so it is I think weaker because um, I don't know it it does feel weaker because you're it, it's just more contrived right it's not it just doesn't yeah. quite it and like. It still works though, and partly because I think it's a comedy, and like yes. we we expect yeah. some sort of contrivedness in comedies. Like in comedies, the plot happens for funny, not just because it made sense. You know what I mean? Like comedy, all the times will forsake plot for humor, but and and we yeah. expect that, and we like that, and that's a part of it. And so I think that's partly why it doesn't bother me hugely in this film that there are just some like plot inconsistencies or character arc like weaknesses especially compared to the first film but and, and, and again they I, out though they have an out because like even it, it happens to think twice where he can look at the camera and say that's lazy writing I, you know and i saying? loved it and every time and every time it happened i like like <laughs> I, I loved domino's whole shtick i had no idea like her thing was that she's just lucky and yeah. like and like he keeps and sometimes it'll be like what's what's the code try seven <laughs> <laughs> and he's yeah. like, it's not yeah. like one number and he's like what's lazy writing you know what i mean like my god when he dies dude like he's like when he dies the multiple bright times it's a bright light oh never mind that's just the sun don't look at it oh i was dude, like, like that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying like, I, yeah, was, like, so you know, I was dying like laughing every time like about and like even then I, I i did wonder i was like there seems to be maybe a slight plot hole here because like if deadpool's powers are that he regenerates if you just take the collar off shouldn't he just regenerate immediately well he well he said well he said do not take it off because he wanted to he okay wanted but to like Vanessa. instead of doing that what's his name's gonna travel back in time and do it in a much more complicated way that just feels i don't like well i Cable's don't like i don't i'm gonna think... use my instead of going to see my family i'm gonna go back in time and put this little coin over your heart <laughs> isn't that the effectively the same thing as taking the collar off except that you just did it with time machines instead of well, like just theoretically taking I don't think if he's dead, he's dead, which means his genes are not working anymore. So if you take the collar off after you're dead, you're dead. You know what I'm saying? It's not like his okay. body's going to But is it his power that he again. can come back to life or is it that he just can't die? His power is that he can regenerate. So if you take Wade Wilson and completely burn every atom of him, he cannot come back. Okay. You know what I'm is saying? that like happened so, in the comics before? No, but I mean, same thing with Wolverine. Wolverine can die. He just, um, you have to cut his head off. I mean, like if his brain can't if his brain can't send synapses to his to to heal, or you okay. know what I'm saying? If his brain or not, if he doesn't know how to heal, then he can't heal. Um, that okay. being okay. you know, so like, so okay. point I, being, I but, oh, but it still feels then, a little it, weak. I mean, someone maybe just... challenged me on that, but I mean, if you're dead, you're dead. I mean, like you, you don't your body don't start your body doesn't continue to try to heal itself after you're dead. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Sure. That, that, so. it, that makes sense to me. So I, I'm assuming I think I think that one's solvable, okay. Okay. but. I do think maybe I laugh more in this one, but I think also there's more times where I don't laugh. And that's the, that's the trade off mm -hmm. when they're trying sure, more jokes that. and more riffing. And then, so there's times where I think some things fall flat. Like I think a lot of dominoes and his back and forth is kind of flat for me. Um, you know, and... it's so weird watching her. Cause like, I know, I know Zazie mostly from Atlanta and like yeah. she steals the show so often in that show. And like, you're, she's, she's like, uh, you know, working opposite Donald Glover, who is no slouch at acting and and sh and stealing scenes, and sometimes yeah. Zazzy is the more electric actor in a scene with them too. You know, and maybe and I'm not saying she's, be but I'm just saying like she is such a good actor. It was kind of weird seeing her in such a kind of thin role, and it's and it's like it. it I don't know if it's the directing, I don't know if it's the writing, but she like I just felt like honestly I was like I, I don't know. I feel like there's more of her just like. Person, act. We she could have this role could have been done with a little bit more of her in it, or a little bit more well, of her really acting in it. And it's like I, I, I'm not, I don't like. I know, I know how good she is. This is not. A, she's not. It's not that she's not a good actor. It's just that maybe again the scene she was given, the directing, it just felt very thin. And like we just didn't get a lot. She didn't get a lot to do. And it, she and, and that way she didn't get to bring much to the character. And so in that. Yeah. 
she, you know, yeah, it felt a little thin. Well, when you're doing improv and when you're riffing, you typically, you have to go at the pace of your partner. And we know that Deadpool, Ryan sure. Reynolds, he is setting the pace. And so when he's doing these really quippy things in order to like combat him and like an improv or riffing, you have to be as quick as him because he's saying things really fast. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So like, I think when you do that, you start having characters mimic each other in terms of their pacing, in terms of whatever. Cable does it just like, I mean, maybe 5% out of this entirety of his, but most of the time he's the straight man. But when you have people trying to be sarcastic and trying to also be quippy, it can come off as like, you're, you know, you're riffing, you're playing. And so that's only the downside. So like in another example is when you watch Iron Man and Robert Downey Jr.'s riffing, and you see Gwyneth Paltrow, she can't quite keep up with his cadence. And so sometimes the dialogue she says doesn't 100% match up with the cadence that he's doing. Sure. So that's just the byproduct of, of that kind of, when you're making a comedy, when there's improv and sense. So yeah. I that's that's why I think most of the issues come there. And um, that's just yeah, and, and I think you're, you could be right. I just think with Zazie, I've seen her be quippy as hell in Atlanta. I don't think again, it, yeah, it, it's not, not a thing but, of like but Atlanta is a is a slower pace in like it's slow paced in terms of like some of the episodes. People, some of the episodes. Are, well, difference between I'm talking about slow pace and emotion. Like typically, sure, yes, there are things that are happening quickly. There's like there's action and robberies, whatever. But in Atlanta, it's typically like two people have an emotional response to each other and not trying to one up each other on a joke level you maybe so saying? i i still to me i still feel like i don't think that's because zazie doesn't have that in her just from what no, i've seen either. of her acting i don't i, don't, I think i don't, I don't know if it, 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 it may like you said maybe it's just the dynamic maybe it's just the writing yeah. and honestly it wasn't even those parts that bothered me it was more just like i just felt like her character was just there you know what i mean and like and it's an, it's an odd it's an odd character because she's she doesn't she doesn't know why she's there till the last five minutes of the movie um, right yeah and you know what i'm saying yeah. so it, it's a it's a character that her powers are very weird and it, and how do you bring her in it's weird it just think, she doesn't really have an emotional arc and then she doesn't really she's just she's just kind of a uh uh you know she's she's an, another part of the team but i and I, I guess my issue is like knowing what Zazie's ability is, I wish she could have had the chance to stand out. Sure. I wish I'm curious to if see we're going to have her in movie. there. I, yeah. I'm guessing maybe a scene or two. I, I bet she's maybe not a, I'm also very curious to see if cables in the next movie. I have no idea. Of course. I'm sure he's, he's gotta be referenced at least. I don't know. At um, least reference. I mean, but sure. And I mean, if they're combining with the Marvel universe, they're going to do something with cable being with Josh Rowland being cable and Thanos. Does well, it? He Deadpool did, calls Thanos him Thanos. Also. Right? He calls yeah. him Thanos. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I remember that. Yeah, yeah so but they got to do that again. I mean, like surely there's they, a way they to came out play the same year too. So yeah, and, I realized um, that. And dude, it was yeah. so weird watching it and the opening being like the Logan, like it play. Like, I know. It, like for one, I was just like, I, I it maybe was like, did Logan really come out before this movie? Yeah, and like that was blowing my brain that Logan's like seven years old now, eight years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Either way, and and then so like. Uh, and then it was hilarious. Like him, like he had the little like, what was it like a uh, the pressing the button on the state of like the yes, yes. That he's like were, on the oh, log yeah. or whatever. And then he was just uh, like, and then he was like, I hate Wolverine, <laughs> like whatever. Which I'm guessing yeah. it was the whole thing of like he wanted to do a team up with Wolverine. And now he's dead, so he can't. Right? Is that kind of the... yeah? I mean that, and I think he, Ryan is just constantly trying to poke and flame that going on, you know. And yeah. I, I, I love those it. things it's so too. wonderful. I mean, they're in their writing and they're kind of like, what do we do to kind of touch it, to reference him dying? And yeah. So I, I think it was, I think it's great. I think obviously that's why I told you it does take place after Logan and yeah. Into, yeah. yeah you don't want to watch Clearly. it before Logan. No. And, but it doesn't, you know, this Logan, it, it's not like future. it would ruin it. You wouldn't even know the context of what you're seeing, but no, 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 other no. than yeah. Wolverine dies maybe, but other than that, yeah. Uh, then you might, yeah, I mean like the trailer timeline wise, Logan is in the future. Deadpool does not, hasn't happened yet, but, but, it, but in meta in real life, it's already happened. Yeah. So it's yes. kind of in, yeah. Yeah. It's a very unique thing. So anyway, I mean, I, I enjoyed the movie a lot. I, I, yeah. I've seen juggernaut and it was a big deal for me. Um, so I, 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 I will more comic say accurate juggernaut. You're right. And I do. And I will say, and I think, um, 
I love the references to the CGI fights and like no like all right CGI fight. Uh, I will say the CGI did not look great, uh, and I don't, I know this is like a, a product of its time and probably its budget, and that's fine. But if I just do have a critique, like Juggernaut didn't really ever look great to me, especially in his face. And then um, uh, what's when his Domino name? does her first, uh, I thought Colossus looked pretty decent. It looks but when Domino, okay. when Domino does her first like lucky thing, which we got to talk about X Force. When they do their first lucky thing and she like lands and like all the stuff exploding around her and stuff, it Yeah. looks very cheap and Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And so there's not and I, great. and like on a, at, at the end of the day, I don't care because it's a comedy, No, I don't either. right? Yeah. And like I'm not there for the battles. So I'm not there for the cool fight scenes. Really, Yeah. I'm there for just the whole package and and the humor and the and all that. But it is it is you know one thing, and I, and it is one thing I don't expect. I, I expect Dare, Deadpool Wolverine to not. I hope to ha not have that problem just because it's got it's got Disney budget behind it and Disney Marvel behind it. Yeah, Um, definitely. and so, but yeah, no, I think um, Let's talk about X Force. let's talk about X Force. Let's do it. Yeah, so I mean, I you know it's one of those things you have Brad Pitt showing up as, um, which is Like incredible. I, when that happened, I was like, I was just so caught off guard that Yeah. that because he's in one shot. And I was Yeah. just like, and I was just kind of like following. I was like, who was Brad Pitt in the X Force? Like, I and I and then I had to rewind and be like, oh, he's the invisible guy. Like, I didn't even Yeah. like when he showed up. I don't know why it was just the way I was. It was just like I was like, was there an extra character here that I just Right. wasn't noticing? Yeah, that was Yeah. great. That was that So was you great. have you have that you have um, which you know, The dude. I think you did that for a cup for did it for a cup of coffee, and then you started seeing. I don't know if the same director. I don't think it's the same director for Bullet Train, but then Ryan Reynolds Oh, has a cameo yeah, I on heard Bullet about this. Train, Yeah, right. and so anyway, there's kind of like these swapping of cameos. Channing Tatum Yeah. showing up in places, which I again, I think tonight people are going to see Channing Tatum as Gambit and Deadpool Wolverine, which we'll see That what makes happens. sense, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so you have Terry Crews in a small bit role, and then you have Oh, my yeah. favorite, of course, is 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 it Peter? Peter's my favorite, I think. Is The he the guy guy that's who in with the no the powers? He's in the trailer. guy, he, he's the same guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the same guy that's like, He's like calling him and he's like, sorry, I just, uh, a goon on the weekends or whatever like that. Is that what he, that guy? No, no, no. This Oh is the guy with the mustache. yeah, yeah, yeah. No. The, Okay. I'm yeah, sorry. I'm yeah. actually, I'm crossing wires. We just also watched kite man. Hell yeah. The first two episodes Oh, of that. gotcha. And there's a very, very I know it's similar out. type of character where it's basically like an office Gotcha. dude that gets roped into things and he even Gotcha. has a mustache and so Oh. i'm like literally like crossing my wires there. no yeah anyway no i love yeah he was great and i loved i loved the what happens at Sugar the bear, end as they call him. and um, and then what I, happens I, but it's it's the it's after interesting credit scene the movie involving him yeah yeah well the movie's interesting like it sets up all this time with x force and like building them up they jump out and do it with acdc <laughs> yeah then they all yeah die right it's that domino so like the movie does this thing where it's constantly like even that and then way dying it's taking its time and setting up these jokes it is yeah and so which is what i think the first movie is tighter where it's like we don't have time for this kind of stuff we just have to kind of go from plot you beat got to more plot short beat jokes little joke like just the the cut up jokes the improv jokes in the moment this one you're right it is setting up these longer jokes these more like You know, we're going to set up a joke yeah and we're still doing that. We're still throwing jokes at you 90 miles a minute. You know what I mean? Like constantly, yeah but we're also using the plot as a more vehicle for just humor than just a, yeah we're telling the story of Deadpool and how he became who yeah he is kind of thing. And I think the one of the big expectations going to this movie was was Deadpool and Cable. They're a, I would say, you know, you could argue this week if you ask someone who's Deadpool's best friend and be like Wolverine. It's like that's not the case. Like in the comics, like this is the thing that Ryan Reynolds and Wolverine and Hugh Jackman have kind of created. Of course, it's important when they're together, Yeah. but it's the, what everyone actually, in my opinion, considers a team. Deadpool and Cable, like that is the team, I didn't realize that. That's and interesting. it's yeah, that's like Batman and Robin kind of thing. And Okay. so, and so, whenever they're you know, you're, and I love we brought in Cable, and I Yeah. wish that we would have gotten more of his backstory. Like, Sure. I wish we would have talked about he's the son of Scott I agree. Summers, I agree. I was expecting like he's the son that to of come side up, especially scops. when he shows up to the X mansion or like, Yeah, yeah, and uh, there's when he's like there's. in the car outside of it. I was expecting Yeah. that to come up. I was expecting some like off, like they're not in the movie, but they're like yelling at them off screen, you know, just some Yeah. kind of something. Yeah. And and just even reference recent stuff in MCU, the X Men '97. Like, I feel like we got a lot more of, and obviously they had more time Yeah. to play, 
but they have a lot of information there about Cable, where he comes from and yeah. why he's important to the universe. I think obviously maybe he at this in the movie, he's basically just the Terminator. He's a guy who's just mowing through people trying to get to um, the kid. And I think it would might have been, I don't know. I, I would have liked to see more from that and sure. give Josh Brolin more to work with. And well, and I, it also just felt like a very quick turn at the end for him to be like, I'm not going to go back to my family. I'm going to stick around here and try to save the world. <laughs> like it just, yeah. it just, they didn't motivate that enough for me. Like it, like it did you know, not, it didn't work that he went back in time and like sacrificed never seeing his family again to do that. Like it, it I, it's fine. Like, I mean, like I like that cable sticks around. It's just, they didn't, they didn't motivate that change in heart for him. Honestly, even to a degree, they didn't even really motivate him. Like all of a sudden, you know, it's only 30 seconds, but like it did feel a little bit of a quick turnaround to like, I'm willing to murder anyone I need to, to kill this kid that gets in my way to, okay, fine. I'll let you try to talk him out of it. Like, I don't know. That just, yeah, I don't know. There, there, there's just things like that, that I think you're right. If we got more backstory, if we got more of an emotional arc from him, those issues probably wouldn't have been there. Yeah. It's hard. I mean, it's, it's, it's not, I mean, the way they decided to tell the story, um, I think you could have gave them a lot more room to play with. And, and, and personally, when I, every time I watch it, I just have, I could just be putting my own biases on it. Sure. I just had this feeling that Josh Brolin, and he kind of talked about this a little bit, that he had a hard time filming that movie, but I just get the sense mm. that he's, he's having a hard time filming it because it's like, he's just this guy staring in a mirror. That's just kind of a hard ass and just, a sure. terminator you he know and so terminator, yeah yeah and so you, you get more at the end where he's kind of riffing in the car a little bit but then when mm-hmm. he starts kind of doing that it doesn't really fit the rest of the character so far that they it just presented. comes out of nowhere a little bit yeah yeah and just, even his facial expressions are not consistent with like what we've seen so far so anyway and it sounds like a nitpick but i'm just talking about no i, I think, think these are legitimate issues but again i think yeah. the genre sidesteps it a bit. yeah it, it, again it, i've it seen makes... it quite a bit you know, we talk about like, you know, Hollywood, classical Hollywood filmmaking and like that is plot oriented filmmaking. It's all about the plot. But but the exceptions to that are genre films in Hollywood filmmaking. Yeah. The the genre films can get away yeah. with not I mean musicals take a five minute break from plot to sing a song and, and comedies get to say, you know what, it's not as much about how things happen as much as it is about how funny it is when they do. And I think that is, obst- I think, I think that is a strength of what Deadpool is. And now this what's about to be this trilogy It is another unique part of this Marvel universe. To me, it lines up with, it's kind of like, it's similar to the game of uh, guardians of the galaxy films and that trilogy of like, they are distinctly their own flavor and they get to kind of play by their own rules in ways that other films can't even in the same universe, but they work so well because they're just kind of, they're in their own lane. And I feel like the Deadpool movies are the same thing. There's nothing else like them in the Marvel universe. There's nothing else that is purely a comedy. And I, and yeah. I think, and like only trying to be a comedy. And I think because of that, it and carves right its own path. Yeah. And, and it, it carves its own path. It feels unique and, and, it, and it's fun. And it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see more of this. And I, and I think, you know, honestly, I think the MCU was strongest when it was playing with different genres with its different films. You I, know what I mean, I think, yeah. I think even the problems I have with the Thor films are there, but when those were really like medieval high fantasy films in space, I think it worked better. I think when, you know, guardians of the galaxy is obviously its own flavor. Um, you know, and I, I think even, you know, like the Iron Man's were a very different flavor of action film from the Captain America movies and, and all this kind of stuff. And so I think, you know, and I hope we're getting back to that. I hope we're getting to not everything needs to feel like Avengers it needs to feel like a mashup where everything comes together. Every, we want, we want, we want you to take risk. We want you to take, let's go in this very specific direction. And that's going to kind of box us in creatively or make us to force us to make some decisions. But I think we get better products because of that. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, thank you. Right. I love Deadpool one and two. I'm, you know, I was already knew I would be loving and excited for the third one, but you know, obviously very much excited for it. And I love that we're getting to get another, like I saw the, I saw the, the Rotten Tomato score drop like yesterday and maybe it's updated, but it was hovering around 80%. And honestly, to me, that sounded better. Like, like there's times when I see a movie at 99% and I think, and I think everyone loves this. 
that means that maybe everyone likes it, but no one loves it kind of thing. You know what I mean? Sure. Like we're like, if it's so massively appealing, there's no one that doesn't like what they're trying to do here, then they probably didn't take a ton of risks potentially. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so a movie in a genre like this, the same with Guardians of the Galaxy, if those are in the 80s, I think that's more promising because it's more like the people that know what they want from these films got it. And some people, that's just not going to be their flavor of ice cream, but that's okay. We don't need to make every movie to be vanilla where everyone loves it. You know what I mean? And so I think, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. I, I, I'm, I'm sure there will be some issues with this film, but again, it's a comedy. And if it's yeah. funny and it's fun and it helps kind of, if a byproduct of that, it gives some juice to the MCU proper. Cool. But that's like not why I'm here necessarily for this yeah. film. Yeah. You know? I get you. Let's, I'm going to back up a little bit before we get a little more into the future of the MCU, but sure. Um, I real quick, the director, David Leach, he co-directed John Wick one. And then he, uh, there was a, there was a fun joke about, <laughs> there was a joke yeah. about that in the, the John so Wick, atomic yeah. blonde. He did Bullet Train and The Fall Guy, which I love both Bullet Train and The Fall Guy. Okay, I think they're both great action films, um, and uh, and both of them all, both of them also feel a little long, like they could have shamed off some time there and whatever, mm. just like Deadpool too, in my mm. opinion. Um, but um, he was also a stunt double for Brad Pitt five times, the director. And so I just want to talk about I think the action of this film is really good, it and is. just some of the cinematography and the way things are staged and like the blocking. My one of my favorite moments of the entire movie is when Russell is fixing to the, the final moment when Deadpool jumps in front of the bullet. And I love her playing the, and uh, you know, um, the sun will come out tomorrow. And just yeah. that kind of moment, like in just the way it's blocked from Deadpool jumping and he's wearing, it's, it's like everything Zack Snyder wants his slow motions to be, but they aren't. It's, it's like actually, and it feels like, like it, it's kind of maybe it matters. making fun of that too. I don't know if making fun of it, that Zack Snyder, here's the difference. Zack Snyder feels like, Let's do slow mo. It's like John Wick, right? Or not or John Woo. Let's do slow mo because it looks cool, not because it serves the narrative. In in that scene, I can argue the song that's oh, playing yeah. is the same song that Cable's For listening sure. to when it's when his, his, his wife and daughter got killed. He's get Cable has a mission there. Deadpool's has a mission. I mean, it's like there's so that's the that's the crux of the movie right there. Sure. And so I just anyway, I love the blocking. He's also wearing the X Force suit, which was the black yeah. and white. X Force, oh. if you don't know, the comics is like I believe, basically in the future, like dead people who, who live longer, Deadpool, Wolverine, and a few other people who teamed up to do basically X Men, but the future, X Men, okay. the future. Um, so it's like some well, nice and, and it's a black and white suit because he got burned right before that, right? Like it yes. burns all the color yeah. off or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In the comics, X they all have black and white suits. Sure. In the comics, sure. um, Wolverine, even Wolverine. So. Um, that's my favorite probably moment in the movie is is that slow-mo sequence. And I just want to talk about these final after credit scenes. So yeah. If you, you you may have you may even not have cared or even thought about it because it's multiverse, but now you kind of have, oh, now there's a reason why the TVA could be on Deadpool's case. Sure. Oh yeah, because, absolutely. Yeah. Because Deadpool's he, and like also it's funny because it's they they can get away with this because it's a comedy, like you keep saying, but he just completely re, re, re erases all the growth he did or yeah, yeah. right, right, right. He's still His core conflict is fixed at after the credits and it, yeah. you know, it, 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 again, it works. It's kind of, and it's kind of funny. It's, it's funny at this meta level of like filmmaking level of like, this breaks every rule of like storytelling. You know what I mean? Like yeah. no one, no one tells, no one finishes the conflict after the credit, like when most people have maybe have left the theater or whatever. Um, but, uh, it, it is also, it kind of, when they did that, when the movie opened up with her dying, I was a bit surprised. I was a bit like, yeah, okay. I did not, like, like, I don't know. That just doesn't, that seems maybe almost too cliche that like movie one, the hero gets the girl, movie two, the girl, hero loses the girl, kind of like, I, I don't know. Like it just felt, it, I don't know. I think it's just, the opposite. Most movies, it's the guy that, trying to re, trying to keep trying to keep the girl. Sure, keep the relationship going. You know, but either way, what I'm saying is like, or like they, but he risks losing it. Or he, I mean, in this way, he doesn't actually lose her too. Uh, but I guess like it just it, it felt maybe that way because it like it just it wasn't like, uh, oh, she's they broke up and now he's got to win her back. No, she's just dead. He can't he can't yeah. get her back. It's just and I was just like, well, I just did not. I, I mean, I think for the movie to function. Know, in a, a reasonable way is either that she breaks up 
but thing or she dies because i, I mean i guess the, the, but like couldn't it have well, just well, been like the conflict over like he wants to have a family and she doesn't she's not sure if he could be a good dad and then by like saving what's his name he proves that he could be a good dad i mean like the movie could work at hey, a just basic level like I, Right, I've never thought about it that much, but you're 100 percent correct. But, I mean, it, that is, and I'm that's not, the better plot. That's the better plot. Well, it 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 is for a straight film, but for a comedy, I do kind of like this. Like it, it's it's ridiculous. It's like it's 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 funny in how ridiculous sure. it is, and that like you're right, you didn't have to do this, but you kind of made it extra dramatic. But then you just at the end be like, Rip, rewind, not dramatic yeah, anymore. I mean, it, it does I, give I like, you it funny. gives you it gives you him killing himself. It gives you the opening credit scene with like. Uh, um Celine Dion singing the awesome James oh, Bond. It, well, it was, yeah, the, the James Bond spoof was amazing. I, I yeah. absolutely loved it. And, and, she, and she's an amazing singer and she made a song for Deadpool. An- movie, another highlight was the the choir singing. Oh yeah. In the, oh holy shit balls. Yeah. yeah, oh, holy that's shit very balls. End, yeah. Like that was yeah. Right, I, like you just like layer, like, and you might not have even noticed it. Yeah, you know what I mean. You, did, you don't because when you, I, I, for, I keep forgetting about it, and then I'm yeah. like, wait a minute, they're saying stuff. You they're know? saying, like, oh, holy shit balls. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Uh, and so yeah, it's crazy. It's it's a ridiculous movie. It's, it is, it's, it and is I think ridiculous. that 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 kind of humor is my kind of humor. And gosh, it just was right up my alley in that way. And I'm so, like, you, you know, we're it. talking about these things of like, yeah, you're, it could have been a simpler plot if it was just him trying to prove to his girlfriend he could be a good dad. And that's how he does it by like sacrificing himself for this kid. That's a great, that's an easy way to do it. You know what I mean? Um, but a more ridiculous way to do it, a more just like wacko left field, you wouldn't expect this, especially how it gets resolved way to do it. Is this and that feels more Deadpool-y to me? Yeah, you know what I mean. Which, which you know, leads into also. It's amazing that he kills his and he's like, I'm cleaning up the timelines, right? So if you wanted, if you want a reason of why the X Men universe, which is honestly way you referenced is, the 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 X the the X Men the Wolverine X Men like where he goes back in time and kills himself or the yeah. that version. You referenced that Bridges. from Deadpool one when we were having that podcast, and I I was yeah. like, did I miss? That, like yeah. I, I've known about that scene because it's just like oh, okay. it becomes you know that moment the fact that he does that went you like internet viral like around gotcha. that time okay. you know what I mean when that happened like everyone was just like this is hilarious this is amazing blah 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 yeah so but like when you referenced it, I was like I, I did I miss it in Deadpool one and so when it okay. happened here I was like oh, okay here it is here it is here it is gotcha. and like yes I'm it's, my wires crossed it's amazing it's it's wonderful it's it's like yeah everything about get... one like when he he saves his wife and he's like i'll be right back <laughs> and like he just yeah it just and then the for other no, scene for is no it... regard of like how the what could happen with the timeline and no. i mean clearly dip wolverine opens and you know from the trailer we've he's got his family back he's even got yeah. uh, sh- uh the shatter shatterstar the guy's better at everything and he's like oh. except one thing yeah and then P- and then peter's there and i mean everyone's there right yeah. you know yeah. so well and I'm, I'm, i guess um the other scene, the scene where like all the people are crawling out of the bathtubs, is that from the X Men Japanese, the Wolverine movie where he's in Japan? I can't. I, it's been so long since I've seen that. There's the scene where he's like, these like, there's this room with all these like pools in it, and people are like climbing out of it, and he's like fighting and killing them. Oh well, um, that's just. I think that's is just that from... we want to fight guys and no, 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 it had to be no a towels. Reference. Hold on. I mean, that's in, that's in the beginning of the movie. I mean, that's the beginning, right? That's the no. First this is the movie. after credit scene. This is when he's like, um, fighting at the end. Like he's like, it's like right after the Wolverine, the scene where he kills the old Deadpool. It's like uh, one of the scenes after that. He's like in a in a I'll room, fighting in like a room with a bunch of like people climbing out of these little like water <laughs> things in the floor. Huh. I need to watch it. Maybe I think you're mistaken, but I'm going to. I could be. It. I could be. I'm, I'm going to figure it out. Um, but yeah, no. So I think my computer just freaked out. Um, I mean, big thing here is it opens up a plethora of ideas for the TVA to be involved. And I think. I don't know what to expect from in this upcoming weekend. You know, unfortunately, we have tonight to suffer through. And tomorrow, because mm-hmm. we're seeing on a Saturday, recording this on a Thursday. Um, and so sure. we're going to have to be avoiding spoilers and those kind of things. But I'm because, you know, the trailers make the movie look a little straightforward. 
but they've literally only showed us like a total of 10 minutes of this movie. They've been keeping so much back. Right. Like if you do right. all the footage, like 10 minutes. And so I'm very curious to see the structure of this film. I'm assuming it's going to be a little more straightforward because we'll have Wolverine involved, but I'm, I I don't know. I don't know what to expect this weekend. I, I know I'm going to love it. I've already got, right. you know, I'm I, driving back Sunday. I, I already have a tickets for in Tulsa to watch it Sunday. I might see it again Saturday night. I don't know, but I will see at least twice before I come back home. Hmm. I just, uh, I know I'm going to have a good time with it. Um, but I do want to just talk a little bit about this thing where Kevin Feige, they've been, of course, in the press junket. Like, it's all you can see right now is Deadpool Wolverine. Right. And Kevin Feige was asked about bringing Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans back. And he said, well, we've kind of proven that we can do it with Wolverine. So, you know, mm. we can do it if we handle it with care, which is something we've been saying since Endgame. Like, this isn't the end, right? As soon as they announced Secret Wars, also, we're like, this, they're going to bring them back for Secret Wars. I'm not sure we talked about it on the pod, but the Russo brothers seem like they could be coming back along with Stephen and Marcus. Stephen, yeah, Stephen and Marcus. Uh, Feely? McFeely? McFeely. Yeah, yeah. They're, uh, yeah, Stephen Marcus or Christopher McFeely. I think it's. So I think uh, today is comp- it's also the San Diego, San Diego Comic Con. There's supposed to be a panel tonight for Deadpool Wolverine. Um, there might be some information there, but the big panel is supposed to be Saturday. So while whilst we're in Deadpool, when we, we get out after that, a bunch of announcements. Yeah. We might come out to a bunch of annou- announcements about who's coming into the MCU's, the directors from Civil yeah. Wars, the writers, yeah. any more movies that weren't announced yet, updates on things. Fantastic Four started filming today, I think. And so there's going to be lots of information. And then on top of that, um, yeah, it's going to be a, sh- a smorgasbord of Marvel this weekend. And I'm super excited about that. It's super oh, promising. Like- exciting marvel good marvel exciting hopefully. marvel you know like like, yeah. like reminiscent of why we love this universe and why we fell in love with the mcu yeah and hopefully the thing too is they they've asked even hugh jack this weekend like who would you have to team up with they're like spider-man you know so it's like huge Jack. and that's another this... classic com- i mean spider-man and wolverine yes. are like one of the most iconic crossovers there are in comics right they're, like they're probably two of the biggest marvel characters of all time yeah and, so, and I mean, their crossover is it's known that they hang out <laughs> and they do stuff yeah. together yeah you know spider-man I mean? is the the almost he's like the a universal like, crossover he goes everywhere. he's the universal crossover guy like him and anyone is like oh my god it's spider-man so 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 but i this is not the end for hugh jackman this is no the begin. Like this is a whole he, new. He still realm. looks way too good as Wolverine. He doesn't he looks look good. like he's, he's too an old amazing for it. actor. He brings legacy to it. Kevin Feige just said, today said that we will replace Hugh Jackman as Wolverine eventually. That's what he said. Of today. course, you have to. It, I mean, unless you're just going to not make Marvel movies after he's gone. But yeah, yeah. But yeah. I mean, looking at it from Hugh's perspective, like of course he was getting love during the X Men time periods, and some of the movies were not. Like critically loved at all, he usually now was. He's a, even that those weren't though. One hundred percent. He was now almost he's always in, the bright spot of bad. Movies. Always, always. But now he's in this machine that is like amplifying that love by ten thousand. Like, because because think if 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 Jackman if 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 we erased history and the 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 X Men was always a part of the MCU. The X Men would have been one of those first things they got started. You know, the, we might 100%. have had X Men instead of Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Straight hundred percent, right? Like, yeah. and and neighbor have gotten that because they had X Men. And why would you do a team up movie with that when you have this? But yes. like Hugh Jackman would be at the level of success, and he would be right there with 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 Robert Downey and and Chris Evans of being like, they made this much money. They were in th- they like broke records yeah. for for how much money or how many billion dollar yes. movies they've been. And he would be there if he had been in Mar- in Kevin Feige's hands the whole time, right? Yes, and, and so I. I have to think, you know, you have to be like, well, I mean, I could just do it now. And then I could, and I like, and if, if we got like just five more years of Hugh Jackman being in movies and being like in prominent roles in this, I mean, like he could, he could double his like lifetime earnings <laughs> if he plays his cards right. You know what I mean? 100%. Um, I think it's and, a percent. I mean, again, the pitch is, hey, Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man, Hugh Jackman, Wolverine, Deadpool, Robert Downey Jr. Iron Man. I mean that that, that team is, up. that team that's like, Secret Wars. I mean, yeah. just take Deadpool out of it, but just Hugh, Toby, and Iron add, Man. Add Reed Reed Richards in. Sure. Who cares? And did you see they're 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 starting filming today? I I got. Or you, that's what I was week. saying earlier. Yeah, the, the, yeah. the photo released today. They're starting filming, and some again. The, the, there's a rumor that they're going to fly into San San Diego Comic Con like two three days after shooting. I can see just it. to be on stage, which would be pretty incredible. That's a hard thing to do. Yeah. Um, but 
again, we're we're fixing to get into or the will we see like multiverse. our first will they take something they did they plan this and did they decide to shoot something on day one that they could turn around into Jiffy for a 30 second clip for comic? Oh man, you have no idea. Who knows? I mean, I, there could, I be... could see it. Like if they said we're starting we're starting shooting three days before Comic Con. Yeah. Let's just day one take let's just do that scene. And then we can throw that to our editors, and they can turn. And we only need thirty seconds. You know, I mean, I could, I could see it. It could be, on, it could be on Deadpool Wolverine. That everyone is reporting. There's only one after credit scene, and it's like a. I think it's pretty important. But how many times have they shot the after credit scene after the premiere? Sure. Like they shot the Avengers after credit scene after the premiere of the movie, and put it on there. They shot the shawarma scene after the premiere of Avengers. And so, like, added it to later screenings. No, they added it to the first screen. The premiere is like the the more the Monday of or the week beforehand. Like that's why Chris oh, Evans the is red doing carpet this premiere. Yes, that's why Chris Evans is doing this. He's covered up his beard at the end of Avengers One at the Swarmer place. They put that. They they made, they shot that gotcha. after the premiere before that's the funny. first screenings. That's so funny. there could be all kinds of stuff in the final. Like that must tonight, have been tonight. so expensive to get all those actors back for. A sixty-second clip in all of to their sit ma- there like, in each to, 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 to production design that that you know like yeah <laughs> tells you the, I mean the it, last I like it I mean it's such it's it's a great it is such a perfect little like period to that film uh, that, yeah. that kind of it's just it's just it's just it's just it such takes, a fun it, little thing it, but it takes the wind out of it too and like after credit scene is you know we we did it we're tired now yes you know? I, agree, I agree I agree yeah. And so anyway, it's the yeah, better I mean, version of the like it's it's actually a funny after credit scene. It's like what John Wick or not sorry, it's like what Matrix 4 was thinking it was trying to do with its yeah. after credit scene, but it accomplished it in 60 seconds with no dialogue in Avengers. And yep. they wrote a whole scene for that. Not even more like 15 seconds. Yeah. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Um, but my point is what a great marketing beat. Like, oh, all those people who went to the premiere and people who got advanced yeah. screenings. You have to go back again to watch the other after credit scenes. Yeah, you know? it's great. It's great. Yeah. So anyway, I think we're in for a treat this weekend. Yeah. I'm very excited. I'm excited to see everybody to watch to experience yeah. this movie with all my 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 friends and family. And um, I'm super. I'm also pleased to hear that you like Deadpool one and two as much as I do. And uh, absolutely. I guess I guess can you give me a verdict? Do you like Deadpool one or two better? Which one do you think you'll might revisit? Oh, that's so hard. It, it, it... I think I like them equally, but just for different things in a way. You know what I mean? I, yeah. it, like, I, I do think maybe Deadpool 2 is maybe more rewatchable just because I feel like there's more I missed in that film than yeah. I feel like I missed in Deadpool 1. Like, I feel like I kind of, like, again, I felt like Deadpool 2 was maybe just faster paced and there was more jokes happening that I just, it was just harder to keep up at times. Um, but I still love them both so much. You know what I mean? And I think they're just, one I think is a better comedy and one's a better movie. And I can appreciate either one whenever I want, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, it's, it's hard for me to, it's hard for me to put one of the over the other. Well, how can our listeners write into us below? Listeners, you can write into B I T dot L Y slash two, four, one mail and let us know what you think of Deadpool one or Deadpool two. I would love to know what you guys think is, uh, the better movie or just maybe the better rewatch. What is your preference? Uh, write into us B I T dot L Y slash two, four, one mail. And if you can't hit us up at our belly, you can always find us in the comment section below youtube.com slash at two, four, one studios. As I always say, it's the best place to consume all the content. And again, guys, um, we're fixing to go to an apex here of Spoiler City. I've already put out my Facebook post that I am off the internet um, until Saturday night. And I hope everyone has a good time this weekend. And we will be back next week to discuss Deadpool and Wolverine. So excited. Um, and I'm very excited to watch it multiple times and discuss it with you and and, and see all the implications and and hopefully not be disappointed. I don't think we will be, though. I don't think. What is your preference? Do you, you still prefer Deadpool 1 to 2? Yeah, I think Deadpool 1 is more rewatchable just because it's, it's shorter. It's sure. uh, more, it's it's just faster. It's more compact. And it, you know, the second one, I, I find there's a lot to love about it, but it just kind of, I think it, it, it falls a little bit more, but it also it tries more things. So sure. I think it's, sure. that, yeah, but I still like the second one a whole bunch. And there's a lot of stuff yeah. I like about it. Sure. Um, so, 
I've seen them both probably the same. I think every time I watch the first one, I have to watch the second one afterwards. So <laughs> sure. I've seen them about the same amount of times. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I bet I have a feeling Deadpool and Wolverine will be the one I watch the most going forward. It does have that feeling of like, this could be the best one in the franchise. And I think that is something you don't always feel with, with uh, like going into Guardians 3. I was excited for it, but I didn't expect it to be better than Guardians 1. You know what I mean? Like even like, like they really had to sure up, it is. Up, That's interesting. It, but you yeah. don't think. Wait, I, Guardians I didn't. Guardians 3 is better than Guardians 1. No, 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 no. I, w- I was excited for Guardians 3. I did not oh. expect it to be as good as Guardians 1. Okay, gotcha. I was like, I, it sound I, like I, it was. No, okay. no, no, no. It's, it's not. It's not. Uh, okay. Guardians 1 is the best one. Um, but it, it made me think. Like, I didn't go into it thinking, oh, yeah, this is going to be the best one in the series. But partly because the series just peaked in a way. Uh, I'd, I'd already kind of peaked with the first one. Uh, but uh, and not that's not a slight. It's just, it's just it was so good. But like with this, and I think it's probably because of just the El- because it's Hugh Jackman because it's not just a Deadpool movie, it feels like and and Deadpool is such a good he we we saw him play off a straight man with Cable and it and it works at times but Cable kind of how we discussed it the 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 lack of development for his character kind of utter, undercut some of that kind of team up partnership. We've got all the character development for Wolverine done. <laughs> It's 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 already done, happened. Done. We are attached to the hip to that character, and we are like just on bated breath just to see what happens next with him. And so to have that kind of character to play the straight man, and so we've like I just think this has the possibility to be the best of what we can get out of Deadpool in terms of like he works best with riffing off with other people. You know he works best with a straight man. What better straight man is there in the whole of the MCU than Wolverine? uh you know what i mean so i'm just yeah. i like it, it's exciting feeling like we could be getting the best this can get with this one and that's that you don't always feel that going into the third movie in a franchise yeah we did with some things even like dark knight rises though we were sorely disappointed uh that that one felt like it could you know you just didn't know like oh that going into it this could be the best one it wasn't but this is yeah. another one where you're like going into it like the pieces are there all the pieces are there for this to be the best this, one. This is the dangerous game that we play as fans. And here's our expectations. We, I'm, I'm setting them way too high already. You know, I know. And I'm trying really better. hard to to not be disappointed at all. Yeah. But I'm I'm cautiously optimistic and I have a feeling. Again, if I see Hugh Jackman, I've I've got the perfect ending for Wolverine already. Yeah. I've gotten right. all these things with Wolverine. If I just see him in the cow with the wide eyes. I think it will be worth it for me, whether the movie's as good as one or two or good as the yeah. other X-Men movies or, or other MCU movies either. I, I will be fine walking away from it, but it would be nice to walk away from it thinking, wow, they nailed. There's just a few things for me that like they have to nail sure. that is puts it God tier level. Cool. And well, I think, I think they could do it. I'm excited. I'm excited. We're, we're 40, less than 40 hours away. Woo. Yep. I'm pretty excited. My name is Donovan Thompson. I'm Daniel Wingfield. And we have spoken.